<laughs> What's going on guys? Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are hungry. We got eggs, we got bacon, sausage, fried potatoes. We're ready for breakfast. Today is all about food. We got some friends that are... Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you guys how to make the perfect party guacamole. We got some friends coming over. It's a little goodbye potluck that we're throwing for them because they're working on a TV show and they gotta leave for like four months. They're straight up quarantining the entire cast and crew. So we're gonna see our friends till like October. This is great. It goes with everything. Everybody loves the guy that shows up with a big bowl of guacamole and some chips. Don't be that guy that just shows up empty handed. That's a terrible look. We're gonna finish our breakfast and then we're gonna get started. And apparently I gotta finish my coffee because Ashley says that I'm cranky. <laughs> cheers, babe. <laughs> Oh, that's good. How are you going to say cheers and then not cheers? Oh, yeah, you already <laughs> ready to make some food so one of the reasons why I really like this dish is because it goes with a lot of things it doesn't necessarily have to be Mexican food uh, you could show up to a barbecue where they're making hamburgers and hot dogs throw this on a picnic table with some chips and you're good to go the most important thing about making guacamole is the ingredients I picked these avocados out four days ago. Now if you notice, it's all black around the outside. They're nice and squishy, but not so much that they're falling apart. The reason that that is, is because when I got them, they were kind of firm and I stuck them in a paper bag and put them on the window seal for three days. And then yesterday, I put them in the fridge so they're nice and cold now. So that's the most important part of choosing your avocado is knowing when you're gonna actually serve them. Same thing with your tomatoes. Make sure that they are firm, but they have a little bit of give to them, nice and red, not so soft that you can't cut them. You don't want soggy tomatoes for this type of dish. We need one whole jalapeno. We need two bushels of cilantro. We need three lemons. Yeah, you boys got some skills. And one whole white onion. And lastly, salt. I prefer the rock salts because it goes a lot further. You don't have to add as much to get that same salty flavor. And it's just healthier for you. All right. Yeah, get that out of there. Get the hell off my finger. So, step one, cutting all your avocados. I go right down the middle, make sure that your knife is sharp. Nice and sharp, it's because it's gotta go through these really smoothly. I just trace around the seed, open it up, and then you take that seed, cut it once just like that, and then twist the avocado out. Pull it off, and that goes in the trash. You do that for however many avocados that you have. I've got 12 of them today. You don't have to go as fast as me. Make sure that you're being safe. Make sure that when you cut that avocado and you hit that pit that's inside that you're actually accurate, don't slice your hand off. All right, step one is done. Now we gotta peel the avocado out of each one. I like to use a spoon for this because a lot of people will take the knife and they'll trace around the outside like this and then try and pick it out with the back end. You waste a lot of avocado inside the peeling that way. And let's face it, avocados are expensive, dude. These were like $1.50 each. So that's $20 of avocados just sitting on the table right here. So I prefer to use a spoon because with a spoon, you're not stabbing really. You can trace around the peeling rather than cutting through it. One, two times and you don't waste anything, everything is out. But also, every avocado has that little piece that's at the top where the stem is connected to. Don't let that fall into your guacamole. Cut around that piece, so leave that end for the peeling. Everything else can come out. 
Ooh. Don't get your brains crossed over either. I almost threw a whole half of avocado inside the trash and then the peeling inside the bowl. Shit happens. All right, that part is done. So we got all of our avocados. It's time to mash these things up. I like to take the knife first and just cut it down a little bit so that when you're smashing it down, it's not falling all over the bowl. Next, we got our potato masher, our bean masher, our whatever masher, and you gotta get all of these chunks out. We do this now because we can't do it later. You don't add any ingredients until all these avocados are smashed. All right, smashing's done. That's about the consistency that you want. It's time to transfer this into our actual serving bowl. So, this is our serving bowl. Me and Ashley went on a cruise earlier this year, right before coronavirus hit, uh, down to Cabo, and we picked up this little gem. I love this thing. This is actually the first time that we get to use this because we've been in quarantine. We haven't had any parties. We haven't hosted anything. So I think Ashley's going to be real excited to use this today. Now we transfer all of this into our serving bowl. As you can see, I got a wiping rag right next to me. It's a good idea to do so. Shit. I forgot one. Oh well, looks like that's going to be for breakfast tomorrow. All right, next, we chop the onion. So Ashley's aunt actually taught me a cool way to chop an onion. If you have to chop an entire onion or even half an onion, this is a great way to do it. Check this out. So you cut it horizontally right in half. Make sure to leave the roots and the stem on each side. Uh, and so what you do then, cut it into a quarter and lay it down. Now, this is a quick way so that you don't get tears in your eyes or anything like that. All right, so start on one end and dice in about the size that you want to serve, so as thin as possible, and go in a semicircle, as you can see, but don't cut all the way through. Leave that little outer layer connected. You'll see why in a minute. Go all the way around the entire onion. Then you flip it 90 degrees and you dice the other way. There it is. And all you're left with is essentially just the root. Toss that away. Took 20, 30 seconds. And we got all of our onions nice and diced. Toss those in. I'm gonna do that one more time. I think half an onion for about 12 avocados should be good. You know what the funny part about that is? Ashley's aunt taught me how to do this, yet Ashley doesn't do it. Just kidding, babe. I love the way you chop onions. <laughs> All right, next to the tomatoes. And like I said, make sure that your knife is sharp. So at this point, I usually like to resharpen my knife just because I don't want to press on those tomatoes and smash them as I'm trying to cut if the knife is too dull. All right, and with the tomatoes, I like to cut them in half first and then cut out that part where the stem is supposed to be. And then you're cutting in small, like quarter inch slices, I would say. So when you chop, it should be about that thin. You don't want it any thicker than that. So you don't want just a mouthful of tomato and nothing else. All right, so I like to stack them about two slices thick, and then you just cut them crisscross, 90 degrees. Cut horizontally, and then you cut vertically or vice versa, whatever works for you. And that's it, toss them in. Okay, that's one. I bought three tomatoes, excuse me, I bought four tomatoes because I always like to have an extra one just in case I make it a little too salty or too lemony or whatever so that I can counter that. But we're gonna start with three. Hi babe, how's it going? Can you see how nice and smooth these tomatoes are? Even when I cut them, they're not losing their shape just because I'm putting pressure on them. That's exactly what you want. Moving on to the cilantro. So when you're cutting cilantro, you're gonna cut just the leaves off. All of this, sadly it's trash. If it had roots, I'd put it in a garden, but it doesn't, so it's gotta go in the trash or compost or whatever you do. Now, with cilantro, the thing is, you wanna chop it as 
small as possible. You ever be talking to somebody and they have like a little piece of green something stuck in their teeth? It's usually cilantro or parsley. So chop it small, look after your company. Same as before, vertically first, then horizontally. You don't even want to go a quarter inch. You want to go like an eighth of an inch if you can. And if there's any stragglers, make sure to get them. All right, next step, jalapeno. Now, before you say, I don't like my guacamole spicy, doesn't make it spicy depending on how you do it. Make sure to know who you're cooking for. We have a friend of ours that loves guacamole, hates spicy food. Therefore, what I do for her is, first off, I cut it in half, and then I take the seeds out. The seeds are the spiciest part of a jalapeno. So cut those out and only add as much as you feel is necessary for the people that you're serving. If I'm making this for my brother, I put extra seeds in it. Because he's out of his mind and he loves everything hot. He'll put hot sauce in his cereal if he could. Next, you're gonna cut these very, very, very small. You want them diced as thin as possible. So that's about as thin as I can get them. If you're better with a knife, go even thinner. There go. That goes right in. The bowl is looking nice and full and colorful. That's exactly what you want. So, being that uh, our guests today actually, they like spicy food to a certain degree, I'm gonna go with half of the seeds from the jalapeno, but I'm keeping that other half on standby just in case it's not flavorful enough. And that tomato, I don't know if we'll need it, so it's out of the way as well. And lastly, we gotta chop our lemons. All we're doing is cutting them in half because we're just using the juice. I like to start with two lemons depending on how much juice is in them. And check this out guys, so when you're picking lemons, don't pick the ones with a thick peeling if you're looking for the juice. Thick, pick the ones with a thin peeling. You see how thin that is? Watch how much juice I get out of it. First off, get those seeds out of there. Might be a couple left over, but that's about good. Take your juicer, slap it in there. there we go, squeeze it all the way down. See, and that's a decent amount of juice that I just got out of there. All right. Last ingredient, Himalayan salt. So before I do that, make sure that you're salting with the intention in mind of what you're serving this with. So we're serving this with enchiladas and Spanish rice, but we're also serving it with chips. Chips already have their own salt, so we're not gonna put too much in there. I think somebody's here, Robin's barking. All right, it's time to mix this up. And what I like to do is I use a chopstick. Why? Because when you use a spoon, it throws it all around and it throws it outside of the bowl. If you use a chopstick, check this out. You can mix it around and it's blending it really well. Not only that, but everything is staying inside for the most part. And the same way that you beat eggs, you kind of go in a circle. Holy crap. What's going Ooh. on? <laughs> Everybody, this is our friend Megan. Hello. She's one of the ones that's going to be leaving us for the next few months. Damn it, Megan. All right. Yeah, why you got to leave us? You just got back. It's a job. I know. Work All right. Work. So, let's see what we came up with. Give it a shot. Okay. All right, I think we're done, guys. Are you drinking already? Yeah. Are you drinking without me? All right, guys, that's it. Take a look. That's what you want it to look like. And we're going to party, so let's have some fun. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned how to do this. I hope you guys try it, because it's really easy to make, and it's really good, too. We're going to enjoy our Sunday. We're going to have a drink or two, spend some time with our friends, and we will see you guys next week on Life Skills. Oh. All right, who's hungry?